a moment in your bones when when the fire takes over blood is running heart is pumping as the battle gets closer they can say what they want now Mga kami mga summoners, ako po si Vulcan, kasama ko si Atlas. Kami ang magiging shoutcasters nyo, paputang match 2 ng game 3. What a game it was, Atlas. Yeah, definitely. Looking at it, it was quite surprising. Look at the performance. Very surprising. Yeah. Very And surprising. Really, I think this goes to show that how much growth that BRE has. Sure that. And for me, one player that stood out most in that game was... I mean, the oh, man. with his Galio. Yeah, and XZXP as, as well. Ola. Yeah, so astonishing to see such high kill participation scores. Because I've been looking at the averages of everyone's kill participations in the this split. Yeah, in and a it way. averages around 65 to 70. Uh, not, no one has reached the the uh, two digit with seven uh, on the tens digit mark, and that, that's actually astonishing in how much that KP has deteriorated over the splits because I remember in 2016 KP Tomsu was at like uh, 90, 90 something yeah. yeah and I think this uh, is has to go show about how there's more solo kills uh, but it's really an astonishing stat to look at but looking at the performance of the teams earlier the composition like they're the IPT had very valid picks but BRE played around them so well Suzaku on the Renekton is supposed to be so ahead against that Camille early, but then he got denied so much by XDXP and just how much he was working together with the rest of his team. If you saw that game too, I think you should expect that when we are entering our third game of the best of five series, that no team can rest. You cannot be at your safe zone just yet. You can, yeah. You're always at a risk, and this is what I love about the best of five series. But looking at the standing so far, guys, I think you can see it right now. BRE, one of the newer teams that entered the PGS, now on the playoff stage and going one and one against Imperium Pro Team. And note that for Imperium Pro Team, they are gambling right now. They are challenging their players, which I think is great. It will make yeah, them grow. Definitely. But for Hate, he has been performing great on game one with his jungle. I was on game one with his ADC. But now in game two, we saw a sudden shift because BRE took control yeah, of definitely. that mid and jungle. Just how much that XEXP was able to control that game uh, goes to show that the play style that he has. And their Hate was very respectable, but I saw a lot of ways that Ivalis could have done a lot of those fights better like using the feather storm aggressively is okay but there were a lot of times that if he had saved it when it was uh when it was for necessary then he would have survived he would have been dealing more damage but instead a few times he was using it uh lackluster and not really yeah uh, uh, not uh, optimal not optimal but i would say not really um uh, Taking account that this better storm is my only way, yeah. my last panic button that things can go wrong. But he just used it away. It's like using a zone just too early, yeah. in a way. And the thing is, it, it can deal a lot of damage, but there it's much more var uh, valuable for him to stay alive there. But uh, so far, it seems like the swap in terms of the jungle has been working very, very well. And I'm excited to see this game three, especially in a 1-1 situation, a best of five. Game three is like a reset. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a best of three at this point, reduced to a best of three. Uh, with both of these teams, they the, they know that what the other one was uh, preparing, 
and now they have time to adapt here. They have time. Uh, they've had the practice. They have to apply it right here, right now. But it doesn't mean that the other two games that we saw had no bear yeah, because yeah, you can see that yes, this is like a best of three. But note that what we saw in game one and in game two can really change the outcome mm. in game three because note that for BRE. What a great game for Game Definitely. 2 that was. And now with that momentum going into Game 3, I can't say that this will just be, the mentality will be, hey, right, we're going to treat this like a best of three. No, no it's like Game 1 not. what happened was IPT having great momentum. And I did say before that in Game 1, that Ivalis would be the focus for Imperial Protein. He needs to be the one to step up. And going to Game 2, Yung Zaya using, yes, as you said, the ultimate, a bit lackluster, not optimal, kind of cost them a lot of misplays. Getting caught quite a bit as well. But uh, that's also putting too much of a burden on Ivalis. I think that it's just a very holistic way that they lost and how XP dominated the jungle. Hate wasn't able to apply the pressure that he needed for Suzaku for the rest of his lane. So it's not all on Ivalis right there. But <clears throat> those were very glaring mistakes that I saw in terms of playing Zaya, in terms of playing the AD carry role. So he's not probably in a complete comfort zone. He's still getting there. But he needs to get there quick because we are nearing uh, the third and fourth games of this match. And those are very crucial in how this will end. And when you're talking about the best of five series, it's all about endurance and, let's face it, all about your willpower, your spirit. Going into this grueling set of match games and matches, you need to be aware that every play you make, everything that you do in game one or two, will be carried over in a yeah. very weird way, I would say, because when you're, let's face it, when you're playing in a best of five series, it feels very different because note that for Imperium Protein, they're starting, a, they're trying out a new role swap here, Jungle to ADC, you know, you guys saw that in game one and two. What does this mean for the team itself? More pressure because yeah. this is not any more, let's say, experimenting. You could say that for group stages, but when you're talking about the playoffs, that's a different that's, story. That's very different at that point. It's not even just a ga it's a gambit that they're doing here. They're hoping that the practice and the, the dynamics they have between these players will be retained. The good dynamics they have will be retained once they uh, swap the roles here a bit. But I could say is that the results for that gambit is working out well. We are still seeing, mm. let's see, that we can see the make pure raw mechanic coming from Ivalis and not Definitely. just that from Hate. Light, we, really responding well. But for BRE going into the game two, I really gotta hand it to XDXP. Really popping off in that game two. But now, let's get straight to the drafting phase on phase one. I won't be surprised if Imperium Pro Team will, in a way, respect the Olaf. Definitely, because it it's out. actually a, uh, not a, an unpopular pick in the other regions of League of Legends because. It's actually very nice in how it can just deny all of your appeal on your main targets. But of course here, IPT bans out very Ooh. important targets here, replacing one of their jungle bans for that uh, Olaf ban. As for BRE, it's still going a lot of focus onto Light here and Suzaku. So that Ryze and Galio not available. The, the Scion is definitely not available here. But IPT here, they choose to open the Jarvan in exchange for the Olaf. And they pick up Sejuani for themselves. That's a priority here. A lot of focus on how the junglers can affect the lanes. As for BRE, straight up, they pick up their bot lane. So now we can see, as you said, Atlas for Imperium Pro Team. Look at those three bands straight towards the jungle. Respecting that Olaf finally going mm. to this game three. But now, will this be the point where BRD can show something new to us? Show something new to Imperial Pro Team that can catch them off guard? This will be a Shen Hover. This will go this top could lane. go for the top lane, definitely. As for IPT, they haven't chosen Ivalis' champion just yet, but they have revealed Shadow is going for that ROM. Second rotation of bands. Jarvan banned mm. by IPT for Look this Look at that, one. four yeah. band jungler ban. Yeah, just so much focus here. As for BRE, still a very holistic way of banning. Banning out a uh, light here oh as well as Ivalis, but it seems like BRE. Kha'Zix is another one of those top picked junglers here in the Philippines as well. It's still okay because yeah. Kha'Zix can still fill in that role that the Jarvan See. can try and do. Because you're seeing that it was banned here. Apply early pressure. That's all you need in a jungler and Jarvan and Sajuani really covers that well. But for Kha'Zix too, it's the same story. It's yeah, it's a very similar story. You still want to apply early pressure. And it's also because you want to gobble up those laners for yourself. 
and it's not the same supportive role as what Jarvan and Sujuani would pull out. So it's more of a role where you go, you gank others because they're vulnerable so you can feed yourself and that allows the team to snowball. As for BRE, looking at the way you put it, it was very <laughs> colorful Atlas. <laughs> yeah, and be vulnerable and then to gobble them up. And if this is the Shreven duel here in the mid lane, it's going to be light on that Azir. Oh, exciting. I mean, on that Seraph. So not just the battle of mid laners as players here, but also in the lore of the game. But these two do have a very dynamic way of dueling each other in the mid lane. But get, looking at the patch 8.4, looking at mm. pros and cons, Azir right now is not one of the picks that you want to go for going in to Azareth, but... What do I know? This will be the pro players to go into execution. What we're Definitely. just talking about is just, let's say, theories or whatever. But when you look at it in context of going into the Rift Atlas, anything can happen. Small leads, expect the XTXP, seeing how he has stepped up this game on that Olaf and now on this Kazakhs, I'm excited to see PRE's growth to continue on in this best of five series. Definitely, the XCXP can carry so hard on this team as a jungler. On that Olaf, so much damage as well. But on this Kazakhs, it's gonna be scary if he pops off. But I do love that both of these compositions have very balanced damage distributions. They have a very damaging tops, top lane and mid lane. It's just all around very balanced. And when you're talking about the balance of Imperium Pro Team, you're gonna hand it to the Camille and the Sichuani. You can expect that early pressure from the top lane. But look at that mid lane. That would be my eye of uh, I have I have candy right there. Is that the right way to say that, Les? I no. think I stuttered there. <laughs> How do you think, say it? Uh, I think. No, it's not eye candy. It's more like that lane will be the apple of your eye. Oh God! How yeah. did I mix that up? But. <laughs> At least when it comes to the matchup with the Azir and the Zera, it's something that's very yeah. interesting because when you're talking about the patch 8.4 again, it's all. I think Zera really shines here. Yeah, definitely. Just being able to poke a lot and the fact that the new AP items could potentially be used on him to great effect. Luden's Echo the, Rush. Yeah, Luden's Echo Rush is going to be absolutely terrifying with the long range that Seraph has. There's just so much potential for abuse uh, when you can just rain down terror on the rest of IP team. And for Light, he has a lot of work cut out for him. He has to close into the gap and try, in a way, get in the range of the Zeraths. But once you know the Azir, his range has been really nerfed throughout the whole patch seasons here. And the Zeraths will just outrange this guy. But what, we can all see it all on the Rift once it unfolds. This will be our third game of our match two of Imperium Pro Team versus Barcy X Rage Esports. Let's get straight to the Rift. Okay, Atlas, I think it's time to see the execution going into our third game. Effectively, in a way, this is the best of three series, because whoever gets two points from now will be winning the overall match, but leave it to IBT and BRE. Seeing how the growth is not stopping, I can expect, we can all expect that we have a lot of things to expect from these pro teams. Mm -hmm, definitely, this is going to be Everything from game one into carrying over the momentum, the knowledge, the preparation, the adaptation that they have. Both of these teams have seen something in the other team to exploit. And that it's up to this third game for both of these teams to patch it up. So in this third game, they can't do it once again. So here, it's really a different dynamic here, definitely in terms of the range because of the compositions that they have picked up here. Uh, as for XDXP on that cause, it's definitely going to be very exciting to see how it fares against these laners. He is starting on the blue side. I think we can expect that. He may go for that poke onto the uh, top side for the rotation, but we can expect maybe a level 2 gang onto the mid lane because I think for Jaime, he doesn't need that much, let's say, camp because he can really out-push this Azir. Mm. As soon as he gets the Lost Chapter, that's the uh, starting point for this Zara. Look at that. The Jaime, range, it yeah. just shows itself. So much range on each of his abilities. It seems like Jaime is already beginning to really trade it off Man, against Look Light. at him. Yeah, he knows his movements. He knows exactly where the soldiers can reach him and can. So 
This is Hyman effectively playing this Zerat and Azir matchup well. Mm -hmm. And he is. He might be preparing it so that XXP can get a really good gank on him, or at least burn out a flash. Uh, it seems like here, uh, Jaime will be pulling the wave a little bit. Of course, the wave clear is in Light's favor. However, this could mean that he is vulnerable to XXP's attack. Oh. As for Hape... Hang on there. I think he just invaded the red side of BRE. Mm. Seems just like it. This is actually a pattern we saw in our game one, guys. I mean, go for the red, go to his own red, knowing that he saw a blue. So maybe we might see another quarrel in the blue side. Mm -hmm. Could be another point there. But of course, I don't think that hate will let it happen a second time right there. Even though the Sejuani's clear is a little bit slower, I think XZXP will catch on to this quick and then go straight for the blue buff instead of waiting for hate. Because it's a little bit too risky on the side of a Kha'Zix to try and go for that uh, fight in the blue buff without that much information. And it's dangerous for uh, XZXP in general, but right now it looks like Light is respecting that zero he will not uh, stay in that long because look at that ridiculous range that the Zeros has over this azir mm -hmm. definitely very scary already light chunked down to below half health having to chug those potions means that he will struggle a little bit in that lane until he gets the appropriate items as for x the xp doesn't seem like he's going for the buffs at all just going to clear his own jungle doesn't want to take any risk because if you get behind as a Kha'Zix it's much more debilitating than if you were an Olaf or a Jarvan or a Sejuani mm, I mean the risks are greater than the rewards for BRE so they won't commit to uh, the invade they'll just let it get the blue he'll just let him get that red buff but oh what's this XXP spawned on the river he may go towards the mid we're seeing movements there but seeing how the lanes are being panned out for the bot lane, this could be a prep for a bot lane gang. Mm -hmm. A little pings in the bot side jungle of BRE, meaning IPT knows that XDXP is probably around the bottom side of the map there after clearing that far, uh, farce here on the top side. That means that Hate has a little bit of information on the camps that has been that have been cleared by BRE. And now at this point, I don't think we are, will expect a first blood just yet. Because we're seeing a lot of laners, especially the mid to bottom. Every, actually, every lane is more about outpushing each other. And it's kind of difficult to gank a Camille at this point. And seeing how Jaime has the minion dematerializer will just continue to push in light. And once he's level 6, expect that he will be just all over the map with his ultimate. I'm just trying to snipe it out, help the rest of his lane survive here. And pretty good trading here from Lando, aggressive. He does get away. He goes back Ooh. in. Ooh, that was actually kind of risky for uh, yeah. Suzaku, but I don't think he's as scared with his Kha'Zix. He can still go in strong in ham, but now Lando is kind of chunked low on health. He has to be very careful here. Suzaku, once he gets his hook shot up, will want to go on him. The precision might be the one to finish him off. And X the XP, he has to be right around the corner, clearing his own Krugs, just in case that Suzaku wants to do anything gutsy. At this point, Atlas, this is game three. As we always say, this is the middle part of our best of five series where not anymore is the game where you could try and ma make room for small mistakes anymore. Because mm. like, let's face it, game one, you would kind of feel relaxed a bit, just a bit. But come as the games goes by, your mentality will change completely. Yeah, definitely. You don't. You have to not let the nerve get to you because there's a lot of pressure the longer that this match goes on. Uh, once you get to... Game three, that's really where the pressure starts just crushing you. And that's when these teams have to resist that. IPT, they have players uh, that have experienced this many, many times over the course of the PGS. And definitely, they have that potential to just resist it. But BRE, will they be able to match that kind of resilience from IPT? It seems like right now they're hesitating a little bit. They're not pulling too many triggers. Even the small plays that they can make, such as a little bit of an invade, a little bit of deep vision, they're not taking it just yet. And not taking any risks when going in for that. We have yet to see our first blood. So, nearing our 7-minute mark, things are gonna speed up just a bit. Know that the ultimates will be unlocked soon, so expect some proactive moves coming from Jaime Peralta. Their junglers might meet each other in his bot Ooh. side. Hate. Has an idea where XCXP is. And I'm just waiting for Jaime to just roam with his arrow because he's just continuously pushing out his lane. Maybe we can expect the same proactiveness as Jaime had in game two, but he was a, on a Galleon, so... 
It's a lot more potential for that. Uh, even though that... Uh, even though that Jaime yeah. did perform well in game two, I don't think that playing the Zareth will change it completely. But we can always hope that BRE continuously have plans to fight against IPT. But as of now, look at that. Four members invested on this blue buff. It could be a fight for It's this a resource blue buff. war. Stand United is coming through. Lanzo Ooh. forcing out a flash. Ooh, from light. That will be a blow. A lot of a lot of that actually burned just for the blue buff. And it's actually very important to take that blue buff for Jaime. And in the end, what does this mean? Light does not have his flash. This can set up a gank, perhaps for XDXP in the middle lane. Mm -hmm. As for Jaime, getting that blue buff is actually very vital. Being able to just constantly push out with Reckless Abandon without a care about your mana means that you can just con keep pushing Light in, keep trying to go for those roams. That wave here will be crucial for getting mid priority. And when you get that priority, Atlas. Expect that the roams will really change everything because it's not just that the junglers can influence the top or the bot. These always that's why I think you see the KP and the junglers going down a bit. We see more solo kills happening in the lanes and we see more proactiveness from the mid laners. Mm -hmm, definitely, and that's just a really different environment from before. And it's really fresh to see everything that's happening in the PGS right now. As for our junglers, they, as you said, they haven't pulled the triggers right just yet. They have been going for these small plays, trying to go for the blue buff. Resource wars. Yeah, resource way. wars, but not right now. They're not going for anything big just yet, which is hurting XTXP more than it's hurting hate. Hate, mm, uh, a little bit more low econ, can pull the trigger when it's needed, but XTXP is a little bit more pressure to get ahead because if he doesn't, it's actually quite dangerous and he might falter when it comes to when the game transitions out of laning phase. And when it when it does happen, XDXP will have a really difficult time doing what he's supposed to do as a Kha'Zix. Go for the squishies, go for the early pressures. But at this point, when you're entering the 9 minute mark as of now, he can't be the one to really go in recklessly anymore. Mm. Because we know that these guys, especially Lion with this Azir, has his Emperor's Divide. And when you see... XDXP going in with just a leap. him away. He's flicking away like a fly. So for XDXP, his window of time, his window of opportunity is closing. He needs to do something. As for IPT, I think Suzaku has been doing pretty well on his top side. Not as dominating as one would think against the Shen, but without the influence of hate as much as usual, this is a pretty good status quo for them. And when Hate is on Sejuani, he was trying to gank the top or the mid, but can't seem to find his footing in, let's say, the map. He's more on taking away resources from the jungler. Maybe that's why he loves playing jungle. He likes taking away the resources. Again, we saw in that level 1 that for XTXP, he did not. He did not have his red buff. What does that mean? Level gap, which is... Big blow to a Kha'Zix. Yeah, especially for a Kha'Zix, which is a very, like, ability-based assassin right there, denying that big chunk of XP from the Red Rambleback that just cuts out a lot of his ganking potential, That because that's one of his slows. When his passive is gone, the red buff is all he can really try uh, to re rely on. And the damage as well as no slouch coming from that. Ooh, might Prison be trouble. Connects. This will be a dive, and finally, we will have our first blood. And Light gets it too, so that's a three-man dive onto top side, and this gets traded by XDXP with a Mountain Drake. But the more Deja immediate, move. yeah. But the more immediate benefit here is for IPT. They can push for first turn of the game here, and this will be huge because it goes to two important members, Suzuku Ooh. and Light. They will really appreciate the bonus gold of this first turret, and that just puts them way ahead in the power curve. Boy, that's gonna be a huge lead. I mean, uh, that's first blood, first turret, and it was shared through light and the top and the jungle. Hate and Suzuko got a good share of that, and now we can expect that, yes, look at that light, finishes up the Nasher's turret. It seems like XDXP trying to recover from this by getting a minion lead, or rather a camp lead, over hate, and that's really been the dynamic here for this game. Hate, uh, his the laners of IPT are making conditions in which it's not favorable for XDXP to gank. Meanwhile, since that means XDXP is relegated a little bit to more, trying to look for openings as well as clearing his own jungle camps, what hate does is 
abuse that by trying to take a little bit of the camps that X the XP would want to take, and then he has all the time in the world. He can pull the trigger when the time is right, but X the XP, as I said, is more pressured to get ahead. And when you're pressured that much, it can work against you or with you, but look at the top lane. No more turret for Lando. Normally, you would see Lando be the one to really outpush his lane, but mm. we are talking about Suzuku from IPT. He has the same play style, in a way, compared to Lando. They just want to go for that early pressure in the top side. But being gapped by three members, that's not fair. Yeah, definitely. Three members up top. And those that was a very good play there by IPT. It just has a very good goal distribution after that play and experience as well. And the first oh. blood going to... Ooh, this might be bad for Suzaku. Gets the slow, gets the proc from the Electrocute, goes over that wall, but XXP will join him in. And the Stan United for the assist. Just the complete safety right there, just to ensure that nothing wrong happens when XXP goes in. And it actually does pace off really, really well for XDXP, that could be the springboard for further kills there. That 300 gold boost could be important for furthering his advantage. Not yet, not enough just yet, Alas. He mm. needs more, and he has to get more, but what are the available lanes that he can go for? It's so difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, if you go for Light, yes, you can burn, uh, burst him down a little bit, but he still has the Empress Divide. As for Suzaku, it's still very tricky. The only way that uh, XDXP can catch up to him if he's escaping with Hookshot is to jump over the wall like he did earlier. As for bot lane, this is a very safe bot lane here. That's black. Oh man. It's pitch black. Oh, he does they not see, see him. him. Aha, hey. What are you going to do? What are you going to show us? Let's see. He's just waiting things out here. Ivalice and Shadow have to close in quickly, but oh. it doesn't seem like Hate is pulling the trigger just yet, waiting for them uh, to have the minion advantage onto the turret. Uh, XXP, he can't do anything here in the top lane side. Now we're seeing a lot of pinks going into PRE's bot They're lane. pulling the trigger now. They need to back off. Oh, don't get too close or you will get CC locked. Seems by like the main target is actually just the bot lane turret, which I is still man. very important. Jaime with going for the clear. ultimate, wave clear as well, scare them away with a few warning shots, actually succeeds. As for his top side, it doesn't seem like XDXP's dive actually got executed. So both uh -oh. of these teams looking for opportunities, looking to pull the trigger, but neither of them going for anything explosive. BRE backs off on the top side, while IPT, they still get what they want in this bottom lane. So we I think IPT gets a small win there. Yeah, we see this a lot. We see this a lot, Alas. In game Ooh. one, we saw the resource. In game two, we saw it again. We're seeing hate slowly crippling, crippling XDXP of his resources, mm. and not just him, also onto Jaime. He needs a blue buff to try and push the lane as effectively as he can, but he can't do that without his blue buff. They do get the trade for the bottling turret with the Rift Herald, which could potentially be a turret for the top side, as seeing as Lando was the one that picked up the eye. This could be very important if, say, Suzaku becomes too much of a split push threat, or if he makes a play, stand United's uh, bot lane or mid lane and then uses the eye there or use the eye first and then go for a teleport or stand united play this is a very versatile way of using it and it's good that they put the eye of the ref herald on nando and he needs that pressure because he lost a lot of it yeah definitely a lot of pressure lost there in the top side when suzaku and light and hate all went top side he lost a lot of priority on the top side of the map and lando just had to submit a little bit and give away that first tier turret and that means suzaku has a lot more freedom on that top side he has to be a little bit more careful there so so far the game is very even both of these teams whenever IPT takes something, BRE takes something on the other side of the map. And this is just a very precarious dance that both of these teams are in right now. But when the trigger oh. is pulled, like here... XSP going for the gag here. He does force a summoner again from light. That's important, because that means that the next time XDXP ganks on this mid lane, it will be much more painful. The only thing he used there was the passive of the upgraded Void Assault. So that means he didn't actually burn anything big there. So, in truth, that was just a free flash there taken away from Light. And that's very good for BRE if, if XDXP goes for the repeat gank. And now the Infernal Drake will be live. We are now nearing our 60-minute mark. We are now going to see how will this pan out because we did see the Mountain Drake going to BRE. Now I want to see. Can Imperial Protein take away this Infernal? Because at this point, 
Any team would want that free boost in stats. Mm -hmm. Definitely, especially with these two compositions, they have three damage threats each. So having that Infernal Drake means that it's actually a huge boost of gold value across the board. It seems like here they will pull the trigger on the Eye of the Rift Herald. Lando uh, releases it in mid lane. They could go for something on the Infernal Drake, so they will trade the Eye for the Infernal Drake. But it seems like since Jaime isn't still in the mid lane, he can use his own wave clear as that Sarah to try and pressure the mid lane, try and prevent IPT from contesting this Infernal Rift. Well, BRE, well played with the Herald play, distraction there. So that will be the Infernal Drake going to BRE. But now we saw Telbert play. Will Lando try and stop the push coming from Susa? This is actually a tense game. We're seeing yeah. Atlas because it's a matter of you take something, we'll take something in return. It's an eye for an eye. Mm, definitely. And so far, both of these teams very, very careful in how they do things. At first, I thought it was hesitation, but looking, the more I look, it seems like it's more restrained. They don't want to dive somewhere that's very dangerous. XDXP showed that in top side. He could have tried to dive Suzaku, but he decided against it. Instead, he went for a more restrained play, going for the Eye of the Rift Herald instead. And that, and that distraction, was it enough? For BRE to take down the Infernal Drake, they were willing to sacrifice the pressure that Suzuku can yeah. have in the top lane for that Drake. So definitely we'll have to see the long-term effects of that Rift being summoned in the mid lane. Perhaps if they get a good Infernal Drake, they didn't burn too many resources there. So they can transition into the mid lane. And then after that, they can rally with the uh, Rift Herald together with a wave clear that Jaime has. But it seems like right now, Suzaku doing a really good job at bullying Lando out of this turret. This could pull a lot of important attention away from the mid lane. Oh, this is bad news. They need to remedy this. We see XDX be going and in with that stuff. And now, looks like Suzaku trying to buy some time for himself. Flashes it away. Will he survive? He's hook shot. He's up in a few seconds from now. Oh, just oh my God! A hook shot out of range of the arcade. so close. The blast there, but that actually could have resulted in a kill if Lando had hit the shadow dash into the taunt there, because that w that missed and by a few inches. They're returning the favor. He does cleanse away. Did get the maximum range knock up from that fissure, but a PM Pro team. They're restraining themselves. Come now, we you want need the turret. <laughs> that turret, but did you see that shot onto Shadow? Now, so much damage, no coming from Jaime. Now, they will go for Jaime, he gets the stat united, he gets the permafrost. Now, are they going in with his feathers? But, Ivalis takes down Jaime with the resets, he does jump over that wall with his rocket jump. And There's now, no blast cone. Looks like it's just somewhere. you and me, Light. Can we take them on? There will be a challenge. That will be a taunt Ooh. connecting, flashing in for that taunt to connect. Light gets away with a shifting stance. The Emperor's Divide won't do much. This will be Ardai taking away with that double kill. It seems like BRE gets away ahead of that. After That was quite messy. Come from both sides there, but it seems like BRE, they get what they want. Even though that IPT was not able to destroy the first tier turret in the mid lane, BRE might be poised to take this one here in the mid. It seems like they have a pretty good wave. The only one defending here is Shadow. They can definitely take this oh. turret and maybe even Shadow's live headbutts back. He does flash away. Stand behind me, minions, and protect me. He will not die. The Baron buff will be live in one minute. Mm -hmm. That could be very important here, but BRE so far doing pretty well in responding to everything that IPT shoots at them. Just going for the right play at the right moment, but earlier, IPT did have a very good uh, way of luring BRE to the top side, so they pulled the trigger mid. They just didn't execute it to perfection. Oh, man. You need to go for this risky place to get a lot of return. And we're seeing this in BRE. So now, the question is, the Baron buff. This is important. Definitely. Know that the two Baron buff was great for APM Pro Team when they got the banner command up and running. But when you look at the composition, I don't think anyone has picked... Definitely it. not. Yeah, because we're not seeing a side, we're not seeing those hefty tags with not much damage, just for pure pressure, we don't see it anymore. Mm. So it looks like Imperial Brothing, they still want to take this Baron Bob at least. Yeah, definitely. Hate could potentially build into it into the future, but 
it would delay the core items of Jujuani too, too much. He has yet to secure his upgrade to his boots, so yeah. he is kind of slow. It's a lot more important to get uh, get the items that need uh, they're needed for the Sijuani to survive more that rather than the banner of command for this one. But they are pinging it. They are acknowledging Baron buff as a real objective. All hail the great Baron. The great Baron will change everything. Mm -hmm. This is going to be very risky indeed. Just both of these teams can do so much with a Baron. If IPT has the Baron, they have Tristana, they have Azir, so much wave clear as well. While BRE, they have their own form of wave clear and they have the Mountain Drake backing them up. And don't you just love it when a team uses the Baron buff too? Optimal. I mean, mm. that's just satisfying to look at. I mean, the great, the biggest objectives in the game itself, the Baron buff being used to a pure effectiveness, that's what you want. And yeah. now we're seeing IPT. They have control, at least from the bot lane, so they could just establish envisions there. But for BRE, there are no slashes there, because know that we are seeing a Zara. That yeah, it's very dangerous. On the red dangerous. side, if you're on the red side as Seraph and the blue team is on the Baron pit, you have so much freedom to attack them from behind the walls, from the side of the river, and that it's quite dangerous for IPT to do it without taking out Jaime. And he has the protection of that wall, but regardless, we gotta respect that Camille mm. when, let's say, Jaime is going for those off over the wall skill shots. He has to respect the respawn that the Imperial Pro team has with the Sejuani and the Azir. There's just so much potential as well. This game right now is just a powder keg waiting to explode. Because definitely, when these two teams meet at an objective, whether it be a turret or a Baron, it's going to be quite explosive. Because looking at this, these two compositions, they can team fight very, very well. If BRE can get very good guerrilla tactics in the jungle or can just have very good skirmishing with Azaya, as, uh, the Kha'Zix as well as the Seraph, they can do very, very well in the following fights. Oh, and we all want to look out for the fights. That, that is the most exciting part of the game itself, not just the, any fight, Atlas, the Baron Pit Dance. That has been locked out all this time here. We saw it in our games one and two, how effective it can work against you and with you. It's about trying to risk for the bigger objectives. Oh, man. Oh, God. Ooh, close call there. Oh, <laughs> Jaime with the mini heart attacks onto Ivalis with his skill shot. So this will be XXB. What's this? Going into the bot lane side. He wants to offer pressure, but Go in for the, the end, ocean break. on time, on the dot. The ocean drake has spawned. This will be BRE already securing, calling it dips. This is ours. This could be very important for BRE. Getting the ocean drake gives them a little bit of boost in their regen. Not just the HP, but the uh, mana as well. So it's very good here for Jaime if they want to do more back uh, underhanded tactics in the jungle. They can go for in and out fights with the Kha'Zix as well as the Zaya. If they can go for it with the Ocean Drake and then stay alive outside of the jungle, they can oh. possibly just out survive IPT. Look at that. Looking at how. The blades are being pushed out. This is actually, in a way, BRH holding things up pretty well against the PM protein. But as the game goes by, this is here will be somehow a huge threat. Get it picking up the hunting guys. Get the uh, build path towards the end of torment. At this point, Atlas, I think we're just seeing wa waves being pushed out. I think the team, the, all the teams, both teams and the members itself. They're not going for the risky attempts yeah. to push until the inner turret. Definitely not, because the, the one to start the, the Baron will usually be IPT with this kind of composition. But because BRE has the Seraph, has a lot of potential to take away the Baron pit, the Baron buff rather, whether it be through uh, countering it with their own engage or just interrupting it. It's really too much of a risk right now unless IPT takes out key members of BRE. And you can see right now for Imperium Pro Team, they only have secured the outer. They are not willing to risk themselves to go until the inner, just preparing the lane so the minions can push it for themselves. But as of now, we are seeing the Banner of Command being completed by Shadow on the bra. Mm -hmm. That will be the pickup for Shadow there. This could mean that they Takes will... Me back. Yeah. That could mean that they will pull the trigger a little bit more. They will have more confidence because right now, Shana has not completed her own banner just yet. 
if they get good pressure with the advantage that the Banner of Command can give them, say in another lane far away from Baron in the boss side, that could be huge. And now, looks like a duel will happen in the bot lane. Oh, Suzuku kind of underestimating the damage of the Shen. He gets the shield. Will be enough. He does flash away. Oh, God. He has to get away here. Dominion. One, two. He will survive. He won't die. He burned his flash, though. That now. could be quite important. And the resilience of Lando right there just has a Thorn Mail, has a Ninja Tabi. Everything's so Suzaku cannot pierce through him. Looks oh. Like, oh, look at that three man <laughs> knock up. Following up with the Glacier feature for that disengage. Lando comes in with a Stanley Knight taunts four members of Imperial Protein. Now Ivalis is forced to back up. X to X3 will just assassinate him all alone. Man, that is just BRE. As soon as they see that Suzaku is wounded heavily, they go for a play. They try and take down IPT. XD XP gets the kills that he needs in that fight and transitions pretty well into his Baron. And look at that. Immediately the response coming from Shana is to just take him out of the smike range. And here they get another kill. They get Roast Boar for this one. And Jaime takes it away. My god, the Baron buff, and not just the Baron buff, also an extra kill. Two kills to sum it all up. That gold lead is now at uh, nearly 6,000. Uh, uh, yeah, it's actually near the 6,000. So for BRE, well played there in the Baron pit. Let's, let's have a see. replay. Look at that. Look at that three man oh. knockup. It's on light as well. Look and at the since, yeah, Oh, yeah. Ivalis was in a position where he had to rocket jump out to the back of his team. And because of that, he didn't have a second rocket jump when the rest of his team was being slaughtered around him. So the rest of BRE were just able to clean up right there. My god, that taunt was just satisfying. Yeah, that taunt Ooh. as well. The knockup too was just oh, great. Yeah. It means that BRE takes away a huge objective from IPT. Let's see if they can actually make good use of it in the, this moment of the game. Mm -hmm. And kill score is 38, so the turret score is even. 3-3. Three to three. And I think with this Baron buff, it will change. Mm -hmm. Has to be a lot of demolishing coming from BRE here. They have a lot of potential. Stand United is already halfway through its cooldown. Teleport is still up for Lando. So and they could potentially go for this. XDXP is still very scary. He has the Dusk Blade. He has the upgrade to his jungle item. So if he gets to a squishy target like Ivalis or Light, it's going to be instant very scary. Death. Yeah, instant death. He has the boots of mobility to make used of his stealth, his passive, and his ultimate. So you have to expect that Ivalis will be on high alert. And now that's going to be out. What's this? A dive by BRE. Gets disengaged by the Fissure. Looks like Ivalis goes in with that rocket jump. XNX is going into the back. Will it bite him enough time? He's aiming for Ivalis, but Jaime will be the one to do the sniping. It all misses. Everything misses. Seems like they still want to go for this turret, however. Still going strong. They have a good wave. They have the Baron. Oh, <laughs> Baron up and hail <laughs> the Great Canyon yeah, Minion. It's taking it so oh. much damage. And the inhibitor will be the next target. And BRE will go at it very relentlessly. IPT will try and defend this, but there's just way too much damage coming Yay! from that Cannon Minion. The Cannon Minion took oh, down man. the inhibitor. That's what's exciting about the patch. 8.4 Atlas. <laughs> sure, it's, <laughs> it's very non-interactive way. But it's a very disgusting item. way to yeah, take down an Emitter's Atlas. And here, they will go for more pressure in this bot side. They're just barrel, uh, just steamrolling over IPT's turrets right now with the pressure oh that they have. God. The wave clear that Jaime has and the poke that is possible from the Seraph, it is absurd. And now, this will be a mini reset, so let's see. Can Imperial Bro they fight back? Yes, I still believe this because they yeah, have definitely. this Azir. Not that far behind 2 1. And the KDA CSY is still very even, Atlas. And it's more on execution. It has to be very careful because one small step. And you know that they will be in for a nightmare. Yeah, BRE has the advantage here. They are taking the boundary break pretty quickly. Oh, very quickly, Atlas. They do still have the Stand United from Lando Ooh, in the teleport, yeah. but it seems like IPT has to give up the fourth break of the game to BRE. Four stacks onto BRE, looking pretty good. But now the question is, what's going to happen to Imperial Brody if they don't try and remedy the situation they're at because when you're talking about the damage dealers we can only expect that life on this azir can do 
He can do so much. He has to depend on Ivalis. He can. Look yeah. at him. He has the three items that uh, Tristana actually all needs at this point. However, because they still have to be within a certain range, uh, Ivalis as well as Light, uh, Ivalis has a lot longer range, so he's a little bit safer. And Light has a luxury of the soldiers, but it doesn't seem like they have too much protection outside of Shadow right now. And Shadow, because he is building into that banner, uh, into the Eye of the Oasis as well. There's not a much that he can actually do. Ooh, what That's a long game this is. And I think we are expecting maybe one of the impacts into our 31 minute mark closing in. So that would be the uh, seven turret for Bicycle Expert Esports taking down the inner top lane turret. And now they're going in for that dive. First the connect, everyone will dive in and do the that in mind. Oh. That's going to be very important. Going in for the fight. Man, that is just IPT with the right timing for the fight. However, they don't get too much from this. They have to be mindful. Actually, XP wasn't in that fight, but because the Glacial Prison hit exactly where it needed and BRE scattered and faltered under that assault, seems like IPT gets the upper hand right there, but it's not enough to put them back into this game hard. There's, they can still win. They have a very good position from right here, but it's not enough to put them on an even footing with BRE. And let's look at the replay here. Look at that oh, beautiful man. play by Imperium Pro Team. That Feather Storm oh, was yeah. way too early. There was no point in that Feather Storm, Oh actually. my god. Oh, Everything just syncs so well together. The Fissure, the yeah. Divide, they could not escape. Yeah, it's really that early as well. It's just how relentless IPT dove in. And at that point, even I think even if the Feather Storm had been done correctly by uh, the AD carry there by Ardai, it would have been too difficult because by then they no longer have any escapes actually. Beery was just caught there by IPT diving in super deep. And that's kill score 6 to 8, uh, 6 to 9 rather. So, if you brought in from the top lane pickoff, I would say more of the hunt. They got yeah. a great chunk of gold there and not just that. We're moving a lot of shotgun bounties there, so we can expect that. Again, it's very important that these teams cannot be too comfortable at this point. This is game three, best of five series, Atlas. This is the point that it will really come into point your test of your endurance because we are now nearing our 33 minute yeah. mark. And that's gonna be the next Baron in 30 seconds as well. So they really need to prepare. This is where they cannot let the nerve get to them. And if you the recall, nerve. I think for BRE, they took the first Baron of the game. And this will be the second one up for grabs. Yeah, Atlas. if they got a very good push in the mid lane just from the first Baron and the Banner of Command, imagine what they can do with a second Baron with a Banner of Command as well. And now that they I have a very, yeah, they have a very good Drake lead, they have a good gold lead as well at this point in the game. They can actually force oh. very big things here, but IPT, they are no slouch. They will try and control this area. Ooh. If BRE takes the bait here, IPT will go straight over the wall oh, no. in their faces. Oh, Jana, please be careful in the jungle of He's going to do a little bit of control and a little bit expect, of vision dash Okay, here. everyone, they want... Jana, you got to go. You got to go for run. it. You get slow, by the kill, and that's going to be Avalos. Going in with a rocket jump. Perm Frost does connect to Shanna. She breaks it with the unbreakable will, and now it will be XXP going to the flag. Go in for the snipe. Very close, go so close, but not enough. XXP flies away. Are they now in this fight? Still staying, sticking in. League of Stuff stays is there, and Shadow, he goes down. Oh man, I think BRE. That's just a one for one right now, but Ivalis will inevitably Hello. fall here. Oh, if he wait, go I'll for play it. perhaps. Ooh, close call. IPT got impatient there. They saw Shana and thought that she was the best target to go for and chase to the ends of the earth to the side of the Baron pit. But that left BRE with the opportunity. XDXP gets the chunk onto Ivalis. And that just meant that because he had to rocket jump away, he wasn't dealing any DPS at that time. So BRE was just free to jump oh. in with the rest of the team. Oh, However, yeah. this is still very risky. Hey, teleport coming in, Atlas. There's the lockdown from the only main of Ardai. You're low in health. You're getting CC low, but the Perfect Frost goes in with the flash and Q. Shot down there. That's not over just yet. Still against that double kill. Lando is gonna 
tried top lot to the goop, but he can't get close. Hey, by some time, it will be Lando going for top. X next, he goes in, assassinates it, and burst the bike. Just hits Lando, just the zone. Jaime tried to step to the goop. Very close, very close, but a bit off. That was messy. BRE overstayed there. Trying to go for something. There really was no point in staying for too long around that side. They let Suzaku actually deal damage at that point. And as he's very, very dangerous, Arda and Shana pay for it with their lives. And Jaime, he wasn't hitting... I, I haven't seen him hitting any of his ultimates spot on where it would really, really matter. Because IPT, they place themselves in a lot of situations where the ultimate from Seraph could finish them off. However, the right of Arcane doesn't seem to get oh. too much. The Elder Drake, very, very Ooh. sneaky here, come from Ivalis, but XDXP will discover this. I see it, and do they know that XDXP? Shadow's on the way. Oh, God. Elder, go for the steal. <laughs> no, you won't. There you go. There you go. That's what you get for trying to steal the Elder. That well, is just beautiful, bro, but that Baron was well is... executed, but now yeah. you're E going into the Baron. Baron is going down very quickly with two Mountain Drakes. I don't think IPT can get here in time. Wait. Early here coming from IPT. Oh, he hates too call. late. Looks like Ardai goes in out with the fan against the snare. Oh, Suzaku. Oh, Suzaku goes in on the Ardai. He's left alone. He can't do anything. What That's else can job. IPT do? BRE still gets the Baron buff on three members, but it seems like IPT is not wasting any time. They will use this short limb. Drake buff to go straight for the mid lane. Look at that. Go BRE Kenny already Kenny. going for that Baron plus banner combo. However, without anyone with a Baron buff to support it, it falls down quickly. And now IPT, they are eyeing this mid lane turret. They're just going for it. And they know they have the combat stats to back oh, it up. Okay. BRE, BRE has to be very careful. Do? What should you do? Look at the ultimates right now. We do not see it, it for Hey, he's does not have the Glacial Prism just yet, but looking in the set for BRE, it's close to uptime for Jaime to get his ultimate out, half cooldown there. Summoners, uh, we see a flash here from Light. Come just on. a little bit there from uh, IPT. It's more pickups right now, look at that. Ooh, so Zaki could be in trouble. Whoa, Shana just knocked him back inside the base, forcing a fight for Imperial Pro Team. There's a divide, but it will not be enough. And look at the members of Imperial Pro Team split up, but still sticking towards what's important. They are still firm, but in the end, it will be Suzuku, the only member down, because he was the one who got flinged inside the base. Yeah, I think it's a little bit risky for BRE to start these though. fights. Well, for what trade, I'm still going to go for that. So, Ardai. Oh, oh God, here dear. we go. Is this going to be the play? Oh, shot things on hate. And now it's Ardai left to free hit with this Zaya. Look at the members, very low. This will be a cleanup for Barsi x Rich Esports. Ivalis goes away with a rocket drop. Light, low on health. Can he go out? No, it will be a shutdown. Go with you, Ardai. IPT, once again, they overstay now for that time near the turret. They think that the Elder Drake buff will keep them at combat par with BRE. However, BRE is the ones with the four Drakes. They have the gold lead as well. And, and it seems like BRE is just going to go straight for the Nexus for this one. It's still going to be 30 seconds for life. 15 on hate. This Zaku is going to be Ivalis Max Gordon. If BRE up. takes it away, if BRE them, they have to do something. They need to do it now. Ivalis goes in with that rocket what? gun. But immediately, he walks in to Why? his death trap. Why would he do that? He needs to do something, Atlas. Anything Jumps is better, in. better than nothing. He still survives. He's not dead. He can go back to the fountain, regenerate. Man, that was close, actually. The heroic play there from Ivalis. One enough time. <laughs> that enough was time. courageous. It worked. <laughs> that was very brave. And now what's, you know, what's, what's, yeah. what's brave? Look at Suzuku trying to go for the <laughs> teleport play onto Jaime. You talk about brave, Atlas. That's what you do. Oh, man. That's a Going straight for XDXP. Look at that. Oh, his own health. Oh, prison gets trying to break it away with your breakable will. So he won't. Okay, he survives. The Unbreakable will just help. Whew, will help Shana XDXP survive from that CC. But now, a lot of. Can we have a recap? I think a teleport <laughs> was burned, Ultimate was burned, and yeah, no, yeah. everything is a back and forth game right now. Definitely. Very hard to follow right now, but there. BRE tries to force it. 
but Ivalis jumps in between four members, and usually that's crazy. That's a madman play right there. But he didn't die. But he didn't die. He survived he long time. enough for Bury to buy, uh, to not get onto the Nexus directly. It seemed like it paid off. That huge dangerous gambit actually paid off for them. They still lose. They still don't have their mid lane inhibitor, but IPT right now can still poise four advantages they are 5,000 gold behind at this point that's not too big it's more on where that distribution of gold is but the drakes do so much for bre the mountain drake and the flame drake the infernal drake do so much in helping and the fact four stacks yeah four stacks so many drakes right now and x the xp because he has so much damage uh can go for these assassinations onto Ivalis and Light. If not kill them, he can at least push them out of the fight enough for the rest of BRE to take them out. But IPT is fighting back. They are very dangerous indeed. Light is at the point where he deals so much damage. Ivalis as well is reaching that point uh -huh. where of no return oh, where... I see you. Ooh. I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> yeah, <Or> Ivalis <laughs> is at that point where he can deal so much damage as well and oh not to mention Suzaku. Suzaku has been such a key point in these fights that he participates in, taking out stragglers from BRE. And it will be de very dangerous if he, de he gets left alone. Hold me, Atlas, because right now we are entering our 41 minute mark. Four stacks onto BRE. Then the next Elder Drake, still kind of far off, but still preparation is important for the great coming of this Elder. But coincidentally, we're seeing the Baron Bob being live in one minute oh and man. 44 seconds. So uh. I am, uh, wait, who got the first Baron? It was DRE, right? Yeah. Who got the second Baron? It was DRE again. Mm. So if you're proud of they have yet to get a Baron buff. So they need to take this away, because that next Baron buff. But they took the Elder. Yes, yeah. they took the Elder. But without the Drake stacks that BRE has, it doesn't really amount to anything, because even if they were uh, burning out the health of BRE, they had that Elder Drake buff on the mid lane fight. They tried to force it into the borders of the base of BRE, and they got taken out because they got whittled down by BRE. They had a Baron buff, they had resilient minions, they had Ocean Drake, they had all the stats that they needed. But it and seems like right now, they're still poised to go for another fight. Both of these objectives within a minute of each other spawning. They also have a lot of items, so mm -hmm. they don't... It's about... When you have all the items, all the money, you don't care about the money. You care about the objectives. The yeah. investment that you had in the early game will show right now. BRE having four stacks. They now have the two Mountain Drakes, the Ocean, and the Infernal. Okay. Look at the timers. You can see right now, one minute and 20 seconds for the Elder Drake and 30. 30. Two seconds. Yeah, for Baron. And look at this. IPT has complete control over the area where Baron will spawn. They have the vision control. But BRE, they have just the raw combat advantage if they let, uh, if IPT lets them crash into them. Okay. It's going to be very dangerous. You know, the members of IPT, they are wise to go for the Baron buff, to go for that secure object. Look at that vision control they have. But... I'm more worried. Whoever takes the Elder Drake next, if you're protein, knows that they get the first uh, Elder Drake, but it won't do much because they have no elemental drakes. It's all on the BRE. So for Imperial Protein, you said the man that okay, if they take the Elder, it won't be that beneficial. It's very beneficial because they don't give it to BRE at yeah, least. Yeah, definitely. But there, it seems like they need to be able to take the Baron before the uh, the Elder Drake gets taken here. This is a very precarious position for both of these teams. BRE may seem like in a very good spot, but if IPT gets a good team fight where Suzaku can get to the back line and Ivalis and Light can survive long enough with the help of Shadow, it's going to be very deadly for BRE. Well, BRE, they have very good pick potential here. If they get someone good, if they get like three members, they can possibly go for a good team fight as well. But they have to be very careful. And XDXP <laughs> needs to get the right targets. He has the GA. He has a very big insurance policy here right now. Four but, members. Yeah. But this will be a very dangerous position okay. to be Okay. One member is gone. So what can he do here? Prison immediately. Jaime lands this out of it. But look at Suzuko going to the back line. He likes to go to the rear. Going into the carries. Jaime low. Arda is still kind of healthy. But you can see that Suzuko is doing so much pressure on Tiberi, forcing them to back off. Yeah, XDXP was no. not oh, able to get a good shot onto Ivalis. Hyman low! Oh, <laughs> Ivalis with a kill onto Hyman! Now Suzuko goes in, he has the Angel, he can survive. Now it's a matter of buying time. Ivalis came back from the dead, 
And now light. Oh my god. He's been XD doing XD. a Baron. Hey, is very dangerous. You gotta do something. They have to run kill away. Kill someone. You have to kill at least one member. Lion gets the bear, gets the shield. He survives. Ivalis going in with Shana, focusing in Arde. Now focusing on Ivalis again, but looking at the other side of the map, X to X, just leaves away. But still again, why is everyone coming back from the dead? Why can't they just stay down? Why are they coming back up? And now Arde going into Lion again with the shield. And again here at the blue side, Lando, no one else shadow, gets slow by the omen, gets the kill of the Lando. Everything is everything, so scattered. Everything, everyone's surviving. They won't die. They have second lives. I wish I had the same thing. <laughs> but VRE, they have the advantage here. They take out three members of IPT. Because IPT did something very gutsy. They started the Baron. And then they had they were in a pretty good position. Because yeah. Uh, Ivalis, yeah, actually XP jumped on Ivalis and Light, but Ivalis was able to jump away and the rest of IPT was able to delay XD XP enough for Ivalis to be back in action. How oh, yo. Unless Double epic oh monster. My, oh, oh my god, wait! <laughs> Look, four stacks! This is absolutely four ridiculous. Stacks. BRE is poised to take four out Four stacks, but, but will Arnai survive? This he doesn't. The shutdown goes to Suzaku. Oh. At least Arde won't be on fire. Yeah, that means that within the next minute, BRE cannot make any big moves because actually oh, Arde yeah. is 11 4 and 1, so that is a huge chunk of their damage gone for the next minute. So they have to be absolutely careful. They have to regroup and reconsider their options while their AD carries down. But once he's back up, that is huge for a BRE, and IPT needs to watch out. And now that the Baron buff is in the hands for BRE, same as the Elder Drake. If you hear Pro Team, I think they will call it quits for now. They will call it truce. They will relax. They will try and burn and at least buy enough time so that they don't need to face a four stack BRE team. Mm -hmm. Four stacks with and Elder the, Drake. And the, and the Baron buff. And the Baron. And look at that. They and already the activated the Banner of Command and they're really so. going for this mid lane inhibitor and they're just going straight at it. Look at the damage. Will it survive? Look at the wave clear coming from Jaime. Okay. The poke is potent as well. If Jaime gets a few good shots with Arcano Pulse and the rest of his skills on the rest of IPT, it could be very dangerous. Lando trying to protect that canyon minion. It needs to reach that inhibitor and yeah, they need to deliver that payload right there to the inhibitor but seems like oh, yeah. it's left vulnerable uh around the border of the base of ipt and they take it out so they successfully defend against that no. first hey with the blast co flings back to lando Careful. now he can't escape he has the spirit's refuge look at the amount of damage that denies now look at a choke point with the figure and the slow now everyone's getting melted <laughs> by this azir Oh man, that it's was not perfect. over. It's not over. Okay, it's over. Because the prison <laughs> missed. The prison missed. I thought it wasn't over until the prison uh, oh, did not man. connect. But yeah, that's one of the ways where IPT can potentially beat Ooh. out BRE. Oh, wait. Be burned out. Oh, he actually what? gets taken down by the snipe from Jaime. Finally, he gets a really good ultimate out to just take out. <laughs> Take uh, out uh, Ivalis. Four stacks. That's so much damage coming out from BRE and IPT. They had a very good chance there because that was a spot where they could just shred everyone. Light was attacking two very high health targets here, Shana and Lando, when he has the Leandri's Torment. So that's so much damage. And Ivalis as well, no slouch. He He's basically full build right now. Ooh. So it's so much crit and so much damage coming from... Ivalis, Suzaku as well is no slouch. I think pretty much everyone except the junglers and the support, actually uh, the supports are at full build right now. Six packs, that's what you want on your champion and sometimes on your body. But for Imperium Pro Team, kill score is now 70 to 20. Uh, let's not look at the kill score, the goalie, let's just cover that with our hands. Yeah, on the it screen. doesn't really matter anymore. It's a matter of execution. You yeah. saw what Jaime did, sniping away, uh, let's say, see, Ivalis. He gets chunked now, but now 
Looks like the Guardian Angel will be available for Ivalis. It's a very big cooldown. <laughs> as well as XPs, uh, GA will be up as well. So this is an opportunity here. If XDXP can go for that same harassment he always does with Light and Ivalis, where he jumps and chunks him down and then prevents them from being impactful in the fight, even with a GA. So they have to be very careful in how they execute that. As for IPT, we saw that's how they can win a fight against BRE. Even though BRE has four stacks of Drake, <laughs> as well stacks. as perhaps the Baron buff in a, uh, in a few minutes from now. Oh my god, Ardai! That was so close! He just managed to put his summer away, so immediately that will be a trade up onto the ultimate. The flash so, as well is gone from well. Ardai. So now IPT can just recall, reload. Oh man. Oh wait, Joy trying to it. pop the glory. <laughs> XXP goes in. Ah, close call. Ooh, again with Jaime, with a Zareth. Always harassing IPT. There, IPT could have recalled in peace, but Jaime going for his ultimate, very impactful this time. Is it on? Yeah, he just forces them to walk back to base, and this actually means that the inhibitor does not have what? a big defense. Is that. Oh my god, that's a lot of damage from the Dizzer Corner, but now immediately gets removed from the fight. That would be super coming back from the dead. Now, XDXP is going to dual hit in the ultimate side. While Jaime is helping him out here, but that's gonna be a shot down for Jaime. XX manages to get away from the fight, and now Shanna is the one full blown and the front line just soaking up all the damage. The inhibitor is gone. Now, Imperial and Protein, they will go for a mini regroup. So now the members of BRE, so the mid lane is gone, and now what's next? The bot lane. Man, BRE, they are thirsty. They want this win. It's been 51 minutes in this game. They want to end it with inhibitors, but they know that they can't risk it just yet. Game Four three. Stacks. Game three is such an important part of the best of five match that they cannot, they cannot afford to go in too deep because IPT can definitely shred them at this point in the game. Light, Ivalis, very, very high damage. Suzaku as well, if he can survive long enough, deals so much damage. And let's look at how that fight went down. Actually, oh just my. go straight. The GA got popped almost immediately right there. So that means Suzaku wasn't actually impactful for the first few seconds of that fight. And here's Shana and Lana. You look at Ivalis and Light. They are at full health. However, because of the threat of XDXP, the taunt from Lando, as well as all the other threats on BRE, they cannot get their DPS out. They were in a good position health-wise, but because it's way too dangerous to go get in range for auto attacks, for soldier attacks, they don't pull the trigger. And BRE actually just takes away their mid inhibitor all, all, almost for free. And now with the mid lane inhibitor down. Wait, prison? Everything is falling onto XX. He does flash away. Oh he man, does have this the is angel. Good. Oh gosh, Shana's gone. Now nah, that's going to be the XX. He's trying to get away from the fight. No, it won't. That would be a double <laughs> kill. I was setting the resets, closing into the gap. Now oh, Lando <laughs> trying to get away from the fight. He doesn't want to come in, but Arda and Jaime still not backing up just yet. Jaime doing his best to pull so much damage, trying to help Lando escape, but it won't be enough. Suzuko goes in on to Arda. He does have the finish storm, does get away safely. But now Jaime. Oh. Woo! Finally, with the pew! One more shot there, and finally takes down Suzaku. BRE surviving with two members, Ardai and Jaime. They're two most high damage champions right now. Means, ah, Baron. Yeah, because if. Ah, like. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the damage. Yeah, Atlas. the damage from Jaime is too big right now, and them surviving <laughs> is actually pivotal. Because if Jaime and Ardai did not survive Steel. that. Steal! Oh. Could possibly, but no. But if Jaime and Ardai did not survive wait, that, wait. the death timers would be huge. The, the base. Look at the base here. I mean, we're seeing a massive wave of minions. The Nexus turrets are still up. That is what's important here for IPT. Those can regen over My time. God. But now they have the Baron Ball. Aha, uh -huh. Elder Drake, though. Elder Drake. Atlas. They need to pay attention to that. They have a huge wave building on the top side and mid lane against them because there's this uh, Zizrock portal, I believe, yeah. uh, that was producing Void Link. So that's really pushing that top lane and mid lane in favor of BRE. So that's the threat. IPT, they can't be distracted <laughs> okay. by those minions in the mid side and top side. Teleport coming in here from Lando on mid. This good oh, pincer IPT. Hey, going over that wall. 
up to Shanna. He gets zoned out. Lano oh. did use the standing night, but Hyman, did you see that fall? Yeah. One to Ibalus. Now Elder Drake. Wait. This can change it. the fight. If they get the drink, they have the Whoa. burn. But in the end, Imperial Pro, they will steal that away. And Lando, left alone, can't do anything. Immediately trying to. Oh, lie. Teach me how to drift. <laughs> Drift's actually in the wrong direction. Zion Does not goes. get the last hit onto the target oh, that he exactly wants. Oh, God. Now it's wants. Imperial Pro oh, team with the Baron <laughs> and the <laughs> Elder. Canina, it was a party seed. And now it's Imperial Pro team. They don't have as many stacks of Drake as BRE, which puts them over the, over at the top in terms of stats in case they got an Elder. But now they're in a very good position. They can push in very, very deeply here. Because look at this. Uh, all GAs are basically down right now. So if Ivelis and Light can position themselves well without fear, BRE could be taken down and shredded. XDXP is still 30 seconds away. This is a window of opportunity for IPT. Oh, man. They're setting up base. They're setting up camp here in the inner mid turret of BRE. But do you they want see to make something the happen. wave? Do you see that minion wave in the bot lane? The siege is coming. Oh, oh great canyon minion. The battering oh. round. Look at how fast they take it. Oh, BRE yeah. BRE needs to do something. Shadow goes in with a three knockoff. Jaime is there just doing what he loves doing, opening his stomach, viewing away the members. I mean, being pro team, they don't care. They go for the name and their physical left alone. What is happening? Wait, it's there not over. <laughs> they take, they take the inhibitor in mid lane, but oh, that's look all at they the can bot do. Lane. I just love looking at. Red yeah, dots. the Sizzrot as well placed there. Red dots. <laughs> Man, that pushed that bot lane way, way, way deep. And everything here, IPT. Even though they have the Baron, they had the. Elder Drake, it's BRE that was in control of that. They did lose their mid lane inhibitor, but that's not so bad considering IPT has infer uh, rather Elder Drake. <laughs> I was about to say Eternal Drake. Eternal Elder Drake. Drake. If that, Elder if Drake that, and Baron. If that Drake lasted Eternal, my <laughs> God, Atlas. That would but be yeah, Elder Drake and, and Baron, and all they lose is their mid lane inhibitor, and the Zizrod portal in the bottom side actually made the wave be big in that bottom side of the map for BRE, which applied a lot of pressure as well. Because you don't want to lose inhibitors when you're trying to push here. Oh god. Here it comes. This is actually very tense. And at the oh, same man. time, we are nearing our 57 minute mark, going to the 58 minute mark. Uh. This Man. is going to be a long game, it's but so this tense. is what I love about the VGS. The playoffs are at stake here, going into it's the semifinals, Atlas. They want to yeah. go there. It's just straight up resilience from each player. They've been playing for almost an hour, <laughs> and they don't care. All they want is to win. They want to win this third game in this match, because that means they have the momentum going into match point. They cannot afford to lose this, because this is such a... Imagine playing for an hour only for you to lose. That is a huge blow to morale. And <laughs> both of these teams, they want to win it. I mean, you would break your keyboard in half <laughs> because I would do that. I mean, one hour game, a very important game itself because whoever wins this is, as Atlas said, match point. Mm -hmm. And the momentum is on your side too. So, IPT. Treat this as your last game. They want to go for this bot side. They, they don't need to push mid lane so hard. They can just go for a different lane while mid lane is being pressured. If a trigger gets pulled in this game, they have to make it count because yep. the other team will counterattack. Uh -huh. And at this point in the game, at almost an hour, that will be that might be the end of the game. Oh, oh. Spirits refuge. More than denied. Oh, Lando. Lando. What are you doing, boy? He's trying to get away. He's surviving the flashes away. And that's going to be I think they closing in the gap. Next out, Lando Light is on a killing spree. But it doesn't really matter when you have that much stacked up items. Now, the BRE, one member down. Look at that death they can, timer. Yeah, they can still defend this very well because of Jaime. Jaime has such good wave oh, here. Wait. Amazing poke. And look at that. <laughs> he is just taking, oh, <laughs> just in time. Just in with time. a banner of command to make it immune to magic damage. That is one thing that Jaime cannot take down. And that is going to be our dice job. To take down seconds that seconds left on Lano. Stan United, he has it available. Now only 45 seconds left. What's happening? The minions are floating 
Flooding inside the area's base here, and now we see Suzuku in the top lane. Ivalis doesn't care, he's going for an inhibitor. Let's end this right now. BRE with a righteous glory shot, it goes in for the guy. What's that? Oh, yeah! Three man knock up right there. Everyone's invited to fling him away. That's going to be four members of your pro team. Got a low on health, and now looking at the map, that's going to be Suzuku going Wait, in. Wait, why is he there? By. Why is he there? Why is he? Not yet dead, because he has the Guardian Angel. That's the way still going away with Shadow with the Unbreakable, shielding the damage. Saves the life of his top laner. He was at a very dangerous position there. He had to burn his flash, but now look at BRE's base. Oh, oh happy oh. feet, Suzaku. Just going around dodging them magic bullets right there. BRE. Their base is decimated at this point. Three inhibitors down. Meanwhile, IPT has been resilient enough to survive. They have all of their inhibitors up. That means that these super minion waves will come crashing onto BRE. And who's <laughs> just early for the party? Another Baron buff once again shall spawn oh, in this on. one hour game. Let's go, let's go, let's do this. <laughs> the Baron buff is live. Let's gonna have the extra XP. He has. This is, this is the game-deciding Baron. Whoever gets this has so much potential. Top lane, top lane's flooding oh. in. Oh, Heimek just gets the cleanse. Now he's left to free to poke as he pleases. And now leaving behind Lando, Light takes down. Oh my god, Lando is gone. And now they're going on to Heimek. Will he survive? Bye-bye, Heimek. That would be a shotgun <sighs> for Shadow. A cleanup right now for Imperium Protein. But will this be end? Are they with a snare, with a better storm? He's oh. healthy. Shana is still alive. Actually, XP. He can go for some assassination. Emperor's Divine will just kill Shana. And now, looking at the map, and so looking at the health force, that will be it. The base is in wreck. XDXP is not enough to defend against this. The Nexus is being destroyed by these super minions. Susaku gets the game ending auto attack for one of the longest games I've seen in this split of the pro gaming series. Man, that was a crazy game. Uh, <clears throat> I have to catch my breath. <laughs> Did your voice just get destroyed by that I actually game? had phlegm there inside my throat. <laughs> I swallowed it up, so I'm good. <laughs> TMI, dude. But looking at the uh, game of game three, uh, uh, who was playing? Feels like a <laughs> IPT and BRE. Okay, yeah, that's IPT like and BRE. That felt uh, like a game five. It was a 60-minute game. Uh, it was really... Uh, okay, let's recollect. The first. reason that uh, that was very back and yeah. forth was because both teams knew what they needed to win. So, yeah. and the, uh, the other team also needed uh, knew what the other team needed to win. So it's, <laughs> it was just this dance where both BR and IPT were trying to go for moves while not giving the other the opening. However, because of the, maybe it's fatigue, the nerves as well, they do have those openings. They exploit it. They recover quickly. And I think for IPT. One of their, like, you'd underappreciate it because Ivalis and, like, were doing so much damage. But I think Suzaku dealt so much, uh, not dealt, but he did so much there. Diving onto the back line and using, abusing the invincibility frames of the startup cast of uh, Hextech Ultimatum. So he would just wreak havoc at the back line of BRE, leaving Ivalis and uh, Light to just be able to shred the frontline members. So after that, the line gets, the formation gets scattered for BRE. And IPT can just wail on them because, as I said, Suzaku was buying them so much time, causing chaos and havoc in the back line and surviving with this tactical shield, with his hook shot. And just everything played out so well for them at the end. But that was such a Absurd game. That was an intense game, and I think for the players for Imperial Pro Team, they now sit at match point two to one. Will BRE try and bounce back in game four? We will see because it's not yet over. This is the best of five series. We'll see the continuation moving on to game four after a short break. We have been the Shoutcasters. My name is Vulcan. With me was Atlas. See you there at game four. Go for Hyman, he gets a stat united, he gets the perma cross. Now Arda going in with his feathers, but Ivalis takes down Hyman with a recess. He does jump over that wall with his rocket gun. And now, no blast code. looks that like it's just you and me, Light. Can we take them off? There will be a challenge. That will be a talk to connect. He's flashing in for that talk to connect. Light gets away with a shift like Saz. The Emperor's Divide won't do much. This will be Arda taking away with that double kill. 
everything so Suzaku cannot pierce through it. Oh, oh look at that three man <laughs> off the following up with a glacier pizza for that disengage. Lana comes in with a standing knife toss or members of the dear process. Now I will have to force the back up. X to X it will just assassinate him all alone. Dive by BRE, gets disengaged by the Fissure, looks like I was going in with a rocket jump. x is going into the back, will it bite him enough time? He's in for Ivalis, but Hyman will be the one to do the sniping. It all misses, everything misses. Seems like they still want to go for this turret, however. Still going strong, they have a good wave. They have the Baron. Oh, Baron up in. hail <laughs> the Great Canyon yeah. Minion. It's taking it so oh. much. Damage and the inhibitor will be the next target, and BRE will go at it very relentlessly. IPT will try and defend this, but there's just way too much damage. Or that time, where's the connect? Everyone will dive in and do the that the oh. That's going to be very important. Go against for that fight. Man, that is just IP time with the it's right. Slow, by the kill, and that's going to be Atlas going in with a rocket jump. Her cross does connect to Shaft. She breaks it with the unbreakable will, and now will be XXK going to the flag, going in for the snipe. You know, Eric Jules goes so close, but not enough. XXK flies away. Are they now? And this fight still staying, sticking in. League of Stuff stays there, and Shadow, he goes down. Oh man, I think we are E. That's just a one for one right now, but Ivalis will inevitably Hello. fall here. Oh, he wait, I'll play it. perhaps. Ooh, close. Oh. Rest of the team. However, oh, this is still very risky. Hey, teleport coming in, Atlas. There's the lockdown from the only main of Mardi. You're low in health. You're getting CC low, but a perfect frost goes in with the flashing Q. Drop down there. That's not over just yet. Still gonna get that double kill. Lando is gonna. Try thought lot to the group, but he can't get close. Hate by some time. It will be Lana going for Todd. XTX goes in. Assassinates the Air Force Divide. Just hits Lana. There's the zone. Jaime. Try to snipe. Who's my very close. It's one pick up right now. Look at that. Shana, whoa! Shana just knocked him back inside the base, forcing a fight for Imperial Protein. There's the divide, but it will not be enough. And look at the members of Imperial Protein split up, but still sticking towards what the board that they are still firm. Yeah, I think it's a little bit risky for VR to start these fights. One more trade. I'm still going to go for it now. So, our guy. Oh, God. Oh, Here he comes. Is this going to be the play? Oh, shot things on hate, and now it's our guy left to free hit with the Saya. Look at the members, very low. This will be a cleanup for Barsi Express Esports. I believe there's a way with a rock top line, low on health. Can he go out? No. Oh, hey, this Sato is going to be Ivalis mad for If he takes it away, if he broke it, they have to do something. They need to do it now. Ivalis goes in with that rock top, but immediately he walks into Why? his death trap. Why would he do that? He needs to do something, Atlas. Anything Jumps is better, better than nothing. He still survives. He's not dead. He can go back to the fountain. Oh, Ivalis with a kill on the highway. Now Suzuku goes in. He has the angel. He can survive. Now it's a matter of buying time. Ivalis came back from the dead. And now light. Oh my god. He's the Baron. Yeah, he he got to do something. They have to run kill away. Kill someone. You have to kill at least one member. Lion gets the bear, gets the shield. He survives. I was going in with Shana, focusing in Arda. Now focusing on the Ivalis again, but looking at the other side of the map, actually, actually just leaves away. What's well, it again? Why is everyone coming back from the dead? Why can't they just stay down? Why are they coming back up? And now Arda going into line again with the shield. And again here at the blue side, Lando. No one else. Shadow gets slow by the Omen. Gets the kill of the Lando. Everything, everything is everything so sick. That's spirit refuge. Look at the amount of damage that denies. Now look at a choke point with a figure and a slow. Now everyone's getting melted oh. by this Azir. Oh man, that it's was not perfect. Over. It's not over. Okay, it's over. Just the prison <laughs> miss. The prison miss. I thought it wasn't over until the prison uh, oh, did not man. connect. But yeah, that's one of the ways where IPC can potentially be out of TRU. Oh, wait. He burned down. Oh, yeah, wait. What? Gets taken really down from, from the five. That would be super coming back from the dead. Now XDX is going to will hit in the only main side. While Jaime is helping him out here, but that's gonna be a shot down for Jaime XDX he manages to get away from the fight. And now Shana is the one full blown and the front line just soaking up all the damage and inhibitor is gone. Now if you're involved, oh. they will go. Wait, prison. Everything is falling on XDX, he does flash away. Oh, he man. does have He's the angel. Good. Oh gosh, Shana's gone. 
Now that the X Vex is trying to get away from the fight. No, it's more. Now we have double kill out. Ivan setting a reset. Closing into the gap. Now oh, Lando man. trying to get you away from that fight. He doesn't recommit, but Arda and Jaime still not matching up just yet. Jaime doing his best to pull so much damage. Trying to help Lando escape, but it won't be enough. Slickle goes in up to Arda. He does have the finish of does get away safely. But a Jaime. Oh. Woo! Finally, with the pew, one more shot there, and finally takes down that wall. So on to Shanna, he gets thrown down. Lano did oh. use the standing night of Jaime. Did you see that fall? Yeah. One to Ibalus. Now, Albert Drake. Wait, this Who can change it? the fight if they get the Drake. They have the Whoa. first, but in the end, if Miriam broke, they will steal that away. And Lano, left alone, can't do anything immediately. Trend. Oh, and this right yes, now, Fury with a righteous score, Shana goes in for the guy. What's that? Oh, yeah! Three man knock up right there. And first, the fight to fling him away. That's going to be four members of your pro team. Got a low on health. And now, looking at the map, that's going to be Suzaku going Wait, in. Wait, why is he there? Fight. Why is he there? Why is he not yet dead? Because he has the Guardian Angel. That's going to be Suzaku going away with Shana with the Embrace. Deciding Baron, Shana. whoever gets this, has so much potential. Top play, top play flooding in. Oh, oh Jaime just gets the cleanse. Now he's left to free to poke as he pleased. And now leaving behind Lando, Light takes down. Oh my god, Lando is gone. And now they're going on to Jaime. Will he survive? Bye bye, Jaime. That would be a shot there for Shadow. A cleanup right now for Imperium Protein. But will this be it? RJ with a snap, with a better storm. He's oh. healthy. Shana is still alive. Ask the XP. He can go for some assassination. Emperor's Divine will just kill Shana. And now, looking at the map, and so looking at the health force, that will be it. The base is in red. X DXP is not enough to defend against this. The Nexus is being destroyed by these super minions. Susaku gets the game ending auto attack for one of the longest games I've seen in this split of the pro gaming series.